For most of the 100,000 gathered, it was a chance to chant, not in our name. We know that the people causing the misery that we have all over the world today, they are sitting right now in the G20 having a chat. For a handful, over three days, expressing opposition for the G20 wasn't enough. German see, police have been Russia, praised for their handling of the violence. And bottles are being thrown. Collateral damage was kept to a minimum. The protesters have made their point. And now, so too, Hamburg residents are determined to clean up after what many of them have predicted. A lot of them simply got out of town for the weekend because even in the calm of daytime, much of the centre was on lockdown. That's what happens when this many world leaders are in one place at the same time. For what proved to be a new level of discord inside as well. After day one, deadlock on trade and climate change. The negotiators have a lot of work ahead of them, and I hope that they greet us with good results. But I don't want to beat around the bush. The discussions are very difficult. Then a breakthrough of sorts. The United States agreed to back open markets. Subsidized Chinese steel exports continue to frustrate Washington and Europe, so a timeline's been set to work those differences out. If that doesn't happen, it could yet spark a trade war. That's something both these men appear to want to avoid. Strengthening the cooperation between China and the U.S. benefits world peace and prosperity. And it is also in the interest of Chinese, Americans and people around the world. No such leeway on climate change, on which Washington got its very own section in the final G20 communique including the words fossil fuels. In the last version of the communique, we have deliberately mentioned that in the paragraph describing the American position, it is made clear that this is just the American position. So we explicitly don't take on the American position. Turkey spoke of other potential waverers on climate change and even threatened not to ratify the deal without financial concessions. And then the first handshake. So what came out of the Trump-Putin meeting depends on who you ask. He asked a lot of questions about whether Russia had meddled in the U.S. election. I answered these questions as well as I could. But it seems to me he accepted it and agreed. But you are better off asking him what he thought about it. On Sunday morning, a presidential tweet saying only, I've already given my opinion. One which back home, his critics might find hard to accept. Guy Henderson, CGTN, Hamburg.